Welcome everyone again to the webinar. So this webinar is uh, going to be about personalization uh, in marketing with the help of AI, which is a very interesting topic. Um, and the order in which we will be dealing with this topic is first to kind of give you a little bit of introduction so you know who's taking care of you today. And then we'll jump on to Meta and we'll ask Meta, how does Meta enable personalized marketing? And I saw the content and I can already say they do great off cool stuff. So uh, there's a lot to learn from that presentation from Matt. Um, before we jump on to uh, how you can use uh, or combine make and AI, so how you can really leverage automation for reaching personalized marketing. And as promised at the end of, um, of these two um, segments, we will go into some Q&A. So uh, today's webinar is led by two very, very inspirational people. So it's my pleasure to uh, introduce Matt Felter, who's the head of business engineering at Meta. He is a digital marketing technology expert. So he has a ton of experience about how you can help businesses of different size to adapt to this evolving digital marketing ecosystem. I know there's a lot of things changing all the time, but he's really one of the best people that can make sense of it all. Uh, then I have with me uh, Dan, uh, Dan Zrust, who is a solution architect at Make. Uh, Dan is really our go-to person when it comes to anything marketing uh, related at Make. So he's formerly a marketer, but for now uh, we call him the marketing wizard uh, at Make. And lastly, you have the host, which is me. Um, I have the best job of the three. Uh, so I'm the AI transformation lead at Make, which means that I get to work with many different teams and I get to discover what their problems are, what their opportunities are, and try to empower them uh, to help and use uh, AI for their everyday work. Uh, when I'm not doing that, uh, I'm talking to uh, female talent and hoping to inspire them to, to take on uh, this exciting career journey of AI. So that's the three of us. Uh, Dan, do you want to say hi um, to, to everyone? Okay, yeah, short. so as Sarah said, I'm solutions architect, but I happen to have a lot of experience with marketing and online campaigns and all that because I used to be doing it for like seven years before I joined Make. So this webinar is kind of like the perfect fit for me. That, that's amazing to hear. We can't wait uh, for you to share everything that you know. And Matt, um, now do you want to also say a quick hi and then jump on to your part of the story? Sounds great. Thanks, Sarah. Hey, everyone. I'm Matt Felser, and I lead engineering for Meta's advertising partnerships. I'm going to talk today about Meta's investments in AI, the work we're doing to put this technology into the hands of marketers, and how it's easier than ever to harness that power with our great partner, Make. We go to the next slide little run of show. You want to get to the next slide? And one. So AI is having a moment. Uh, everyone is talking about it. Businesses start are starting to explore how they can leverage it. It seems like there's innovations every week in large language models for text generation, new text to image tools coming out, and emerging video and music creation tools. Next slide. But AI isn't new. Uh, the groundwork for these innovations started many years ago before we actually even had the computing technology to build products around it. And AI has been a core part of Meta's DNA ever since the newsfeed launched in 2006. So we've been leading the way with publicly available AI research and technologies for over a decade. And we continue to release foundational industry tools like PyTorch and Llama. And you can try out our latest work with hands-on demos at our new website, meta.ai, or in any of our apps today. Next slide. But AI has fundamentally changed the digital advertising landscape. There are new ways to buy media that give you better results in less time. So ad buying started with buying space, like a billboard, a TV spot, or a website banner. Then it shifted into buying audiences. I want to show my ads to these people wherever they are. And now it's evolving again to buying outcomes. Get me the leads or sales that matter to my business, whoever my customers are, wherever they are. And AI is going to help you do that. Slide. So what exactly is Meta doing today? Since 2018, Meta spent more than $90 billion on CapEx, much of that building out infrastructure to support growth in AI. And we expect to spend another $35 to $40 billion in 2024 to increase our AI capacity. And what does that capital investment look like? 
Next slide. Servers. Uh, I don't know if this video is going to play. Hundreds and hundreds of thousands of these servers training and running our latest models. And we make this investment in these physical pieces of our infrastructure because we know AI is going to help us bring value to the people and businesses that use our services. And we're already seeing the benefits of this. So we've rebuilt our ad stack top to bottom with new infrastructure, new AI models, and new user experiences. And this year, it's driving 20% more conversions than this time last year across all of our ads, all at a lower cost to our advertisers. So Meta is working to make marketers' jobs easier by creating AI models for ad delivery. It helps fill in the gaps where there's partial or missing data. So these models will help our delivery and measurement systems without needing to rely as heavily on individual personal data. So the investments that we're making in modeling also helps us improve ad formats like lead ads, which we'll discuss in a minute. But for example, when your goal is for a person to take an action after seeing an ad, like filling out a form, AI is going to help us predict who is more likely to take those steps towards conversion. And while all that's going on behind the scenes, uh, I want to highlight some of the new AI-powered tools that we've made available to our customers. So we're putting generative AI to work for our advertisers. Meta recently released three features in Ads Manager to generate better ad creative and help you personalize your message for different audience segments. So we've got text variations for your ad copy in both background generation and image outcropping to help you reuse your existing creative across different ad placements. And Meta is also building tools like the Meta Advantage Suite, which is a portfolio of automated ad products. And these solutions enable automation across one or every step of the ads creation process and help businesses connect with the relevant audiences in the right place in the right time, giving you better performance. At its core, Meta Advantage is a suite of 12 different products that use AI and machine learning to help optimize your campaign results and personalize ads by matching them to the right people at the right time. So this suite can do things like automatically broadening your targeting, identifying more sales opportunities or allocating budgets amongst all your different ad sets based on which is getting the most sales to the lowest cost. It can also automatically determine the most effective placement for your individual ads, whether that's on Facebook or Instagram, in a news feed, in a story, in a reel. Um, and these features really help reduce costs and significantly streamline the process of creating an ad. Uh, it eliminates the need for you to do a bunch of manual inputs in our ads manager. That saves you a lot of time and effort. So at Meta, there are two crucial principles to leveraging the full power of machine learning, and that's fuel and freedom. So essentially, you have to give our systems the right fuel for the task at hand, whether that's the right data, the right direction, the right objective, and then the freedom to use that information and to perform its work to deliver value for you. So when it comes to AI-powered campaigns, you can think of the fuel you bring across four different categories. There's the data you bring, which helps us understand your customers and their behaviors while respecting people's data privacy choices. The creative you bring represents your vision, your brand, your call to action. The media options you select reflect your business goals and that specify what you want your marketing to achieve. And finally, measurement strategy represents your learning agenda to really understand the impact of your marketing on your business goals. So... So once you put the fuel in place, uh, machine learning works best when you give it the freedom to unleash, actually, sorry, if you could go back one slide, um, to unleash the full potential of your marketing strategy and find the best results at the lowest cost. Um, so with the right fuel, you'll see a lot of value by giving these solutions the freedom to perform. So with data, that means removing your assumptions about demographics and about people's behavior um, rather than selecting specific audiences and doing a lot of sub-segmentation. Um, you want to let us let you reach and engage with both your intended audience as well as unexpected audiences identified by our systems. And then freedom with creative means AI can deliver differentiated creative with the most relevant message, placement, and format. There's no one size fits all when it comes to building great creative because it can mean something different to each person, but AI will help you match the right creatives to the right audiences. Uh, freedom regarding media can mean that AI has a chance to optimize your investment and reach your most important objectives. And then finally, with measurement, uh, Meta's measurement solutions that employ AI can help provide more comprehensive reporting of outcomes using advanced modeling for where there's not complete data. Um, so these two core principles, fuel and freedom, are fundamental across our entire performance system. There's a lot of hype around AI at the moment, but these are tangible actions to leverage AI to grow your business. 
So for data, consider the conversions API. For creative, explore creative differentiation. For media, leverage our advantage suite. And finally, take advantage of our measurement products to get a deeper understanding of the value that meta ads are creating for you. So moving on to our feature solution for this webinar, our lead ads. So in the past, traditional lead gens relied a lot on non-personalized methods to drive scale, things like direct mail or cold calls. Uh, digital lead generation improved upon that by reaching people when they seek out the services they need. But that means that people are limited to funding businesses that they already know about. Uh, but for businesses looking to move a little bit further up the marketing funnel and raise awareness to start building their customer pipeline, Meta can offer personalized discovery and support frictionless experiences in ways that other lead generation methods can't. So we offer a variety of lead gen ad formats from forms to ads that drop you directly into a chat thread across any of our messaging products to ads that let you call a business directly. So zooming in our, our instant forms product, uh, this allows people to express interest in just a few taps. So these forms load quickly and are mobile first. Uh, they can auto-populate with info that the person's previously shared with Meta, and they can be optimized for either generating lead volume or high quality leads. And for most advertisers, these instant forms outperform forms on their website and reduce the cost of a qualified lead by 20%. So remembering that data is fuel, uh, when running an instant form in a lead ad campaign, there's two ways you can use data to help fuel performance and make can really help facilitate both of those things without requiring a heavy technical lift. So first you've got lead retrieval, which extracts the leads data from Meta and seamlessly sends it to the tools that you use to manage your leads. Then you've got the conversions API, which creates a feedback loop for your lead quality and helps our systems deliver your ads to leads who are more likely to convert. So a lead retrieval integration can be done on its own and has a lot of benefits. It's also a prerequisite for the conversions API integration. But some of the benefits you can see from automating the lead retrieval process. So you don't need to manually download your leads from Meta and save them in a spreadsheet or upload them to other tools. You can take immediate automated action on new leads. And these benefits will really help you scale. It's a one-time setup, applies to all of your campaigns, and will really help you supercharge your lead gen on Meta. So when you create an instant form, you'll be asked to set a performance goal, which helps Meta understand how you measure success for your ads. So you can choose between maximizing your total volume of leads, so your ads would be shown to the people most likely to share their contact information with you. Volume might be the most important thing if you're trying to build an email list or looking to pre-register people for something. Um, or you can maximize the quality of your leads. So your leads, your ads will be shown to people most likely to, con to convert after sharing their contact info with you. So conversions probably matter more if you're more focused on securing intentional leads that you're, you're going to have to follow up on, like booking a test drive at a dealership or getting a price quote. So ads that use the conversion leads performance goal and integrate with the conversions API saw an average of 15% reduction in cost per quality lead and a 44% increase in rate of converting a lead to a quality lead. So ultimately, you get to pick between quality or quantity. And to help you visualize your data journey when you complete this conversions API integration. So let's say you run a lead generation campaign across Meta and a potential customer takes an action from your ad. They submit an instant form to get a quote. At this point, without any further integration, the ad delivery system doesn't receive any more information about that lead. Did that person convert? Was that a quality lead for your business? That information is on your side, but not ours. But if you integrate your CRM with the conversions API, the actions that potential customer took are shared back with Meta. And this enables the ad delivery system to learn which leads are more likely to be customers after you initially engage them. We really find that advertisers who work with Meta business partners see more success with our lead ads. Specifically, they generate 53% more leads. So on that note, I'll pass back over to Sarah and Daniel, who can talk about the specifics of how Make can drive performance for your Meta lead ads. Great. Thanks so much, Matt. I love this. I love the uh, motto fuel and freedom, just because here at Make, we, we do a lot of freedom uh, to innovate. So I like this partnership when uh, you give uh, more for less, essentially, um, you kind of hyperspeed this, uh, this effort that marketers are doing. And we provide you a platform that is able to scale this even further. So I feel like this, this relationship is very, very uh, powerful. So uh, towards Dan, 
Um, he will tell you a little bit about uh, how you're embracing AI with Make. Okay, so as we said earlier, I'm Daniel, and let's talk about embracing AI at Make. Uh, for those of you who don't know Make yet, so Make is a visual automation platform which currently has around 100K users across 180 countries. Some of you may know our mother company, which acquired Make about three years ago, and it's called Salonis. It's a pioneer in process mining uh, from Germany. Um, now, when it comes to actual users of Make as of today, generally speaking, our users love us. So that's why we have very high review ratings across independent review sites. And some of our customers are also from the big brand name world. So we have customers like Spotify or SoftBank or BNY Mellon. So, you know, we are not even that small company anymore. We are actually pretty big. Now, when it comes to our mission, uh, we'd like to empower marketers to visually create, build and automate to reach their true potential. And I'm not going to, I'm not going to say too much about this because I think you will get the idea once Sarah dives into make later on in the presentation. Now let's talk about the problem or the workflow. So let's pretend I'm a marketer now, right? I come from marketing and, you know, I'm running some campaigns. So, you know, I have campaigns running, uh, the campaigns generate leads. Eventually someone needs to process the leads and eventually the leads convert. And of course you can also send the conversions events back to Meta, back to the campaigns for further optimization. But as we said, uh, this webinar will be mainly about this part, even though you can also do this through Make, but that would be kind of a topic for standalone webinar. So in this webinar, we are gonna be talking about how to ingest the leads from Facebook and how to streamline your lead processing, how to basically create customized or personalized messages to the submitters of the leads. So my problem is actually fairly simple. Yep, so I'm running Facebook lead ads to generate leads for my real estate business. So we are gonna be selling properties and I would like to perform a customized or personalized follow-up via email after the lead, the lead is received. So I don't wanna do this with people. I want to do this through AI because you know AI is just faster. You know, you can compile a message within one minute and not within one hour. It might be too late when you follow up for the first time. So we are gonna use make to create these automated follow-ups. And we are gonna show you two ways how you can do it. First one will be simple. So we are basically going to uh, use a simple prompt to AI. And then we are also gonna use a more advanced approach. We are gonna engage assistants, all right? So let's start building. But before we go into the build process, let's focus on the outcome we are after, right? So what is at the end of the day, the ultimate outcome we wanna create. So as we said, we are gonna be create a personalized follow-up where the email to the lead, which is you know looking to buy a property in London, is gonna receive a customized message in this section based on what the lead told us in the form on Facebook, right? In the lead ads form. So here we can see that we are quoting specific needs which were, which were described in the form. So the person was looking for properties which were in quiet environment, family friendly, et cetera, right? And we were able to compile this customized message based on the information from the form. And not only we are gonna be sending this customized email, we also want to create a very simple tracker or very simple CRM. And in this case, we are gonna be using Airtable. Of course, in real life, you can use different things like Salesforce or Pipedrive or HubSpot, whatever. But in my case, I'm going to go simple. So my CRM is Airtable and I'll be also keeping statuses of the leads here. Okay. So once we are done, the process in Make is going to look like this, right? So this is the scenario. And the first part, you know, this is for me, for the marketer, it's kind of easy, right? We are going to be looking for new leads. Then we are going to be retrieving all the lead info from Facebook about that particular lead. Then we are going to send some simple events to Facebook, and then I'm going to store my lead into the CRM. And then the AI magic starts. And, you know, we have Sarah here, our AI guru. So she can tell you more about what is going to be happening in this section of the scenario. So Sarah, what is going on here? Yeah, I love the word AI magic. I think it describes it well. And I'm going to be doing my best to decode what that magic means. Uh, so it's going to be very simple. Uh, we'll be using first uh, a module from OpenAI. Uh, we'll be using it to convert postcode to neighborhood to show you how you can uh, convert different data to something that's more uh, human friendly in your follow-ups. And then we'll be using Entropic, which is another 
which is a competitor to OpenAI, uh, to draft an email uh, that's personalized and that will look like the one that you saw on the slide earlier. So no worries, Dan, we'll, we'll handle the, the AI magic. All right, great. I am glad it doesn't have to be me because as we said, I am just a marketer, right? I'm not an AI guru here. So let's go. Um, so, you know, if you want to start uh, building a process like this, of course, you will need to process the leads from Facebook first. So what are you going to do at Make? Well, you are going to look for the Facebook lead ads app for the new lead module. Right. So you need to capture that event. You need to capture that something happened on Facebook. So you are going to select this module and then you will be asked to set up a webhook after configuring your connection to uh, Facebook. And then you will select the page from which the leads are coming from. And then you can also specify the form. Right. So you are going to create a simple configuration like this and then pay attention to the right side here. Here is a preview of the form which our leads are filling out on Facebook. So, of course, we are asking for basic things like city, postcode and budget. But here we are also asking for a description of your dream house in one sentence. Right. And this is the input which we will be using to generate that customized, that personalized response to the lead later on. And of course, on the next page of the form, you would also ask for your personal details, which would be filled out automatically by Meta because Meta knows you know, who, who those people are, as, as Matt already said. So that part is super easy. That's basically pre-filled most of the time based on the profile info. All right, let's move on. So once we get the notification about the new lead, it's time to get all the lead details about the lead. So we are going to use this module from the Facebook Lead Ads app. And then we are going to map the page ID coming from the first module, the form ID from the first module, and the lead ID. And this module is going to give us, of course, all the lead details, like the answers, but also it's also going to give you, for example, the human-friendly questions in case you need to store them into your CRM, etc. In the next step, we are going to do something which might be new to you or most of you. Uh, because it's highly recommended to also send a simple event back to Meta to tell them, hey, you know, we received the lead. And the event should look like this. It should be uh, done through Facebook Conversions API app through the Send Events module. And you're supposed to send a, an event name set to lead, event time set to now, because that's when you receive the lead. Uh, the action source should be system generated. And then, of course, you should map the lead ID from the first module. And by doing so, you are basically saying, to Meta, hey, everything is good. We got the lead, it worked, you know, we stored it. And then Meta later on can go and use this information for campaign optimization. So, you know, this is not that well known, but don't skip this part. It's important to pass these events back uh, to Meta so they know uh, you captured the leads. Now, keep in mind, this is slightly uh, cut down because the module is too big. So there is multiple fields here. Uh, but the lead ID field can be eventually found within the module. So we are covered here. We processed our lead. Uh, we, we told Meta that you know, we received it. And now it's time to also create a new record in our CRM. So I'm going to do something very simple. I'm going to create a new record from the Airtable module by mapping the first name, last name, email, phone number, city, basically all the fields which you are expecting to be mapped and to be stored in the CRM. Of course, you are also going to map the description of the property they are looking for, et cetera. And now this is where the cool starts, the cool part starts, and this is where AI is going to be deployed. So Sarah, please, stage is yours. Thank you. Uh, the, the fun stuff, definitely, for, for me. Uh, thank you for setting the scene. Now let's see how we can personalize that follow-up. So uh, the first thing that I need to do is to look for OpenAI module. Um, perhaps contraintuitively, um, what you have to look for is create completion, which is basically just the same when you're at, uh, at ChatGPT and you just uh, typing to the chatbot. Uh, so it allows you to send prompts. Uh, prompts are basically messages to, to AI. So you have to look for the new model, module and create completion, and you will get to this uh, page uh, right here. Uh, you first need to connect uh, to OpenAI. Uh, in that connection, like just be uh, mindful that ChatGPT is uh, is one product. Uh, you will need to connect to platform OpenAI, which is a slightly different uh, product. Uh, so when you're making that connection, just make sure that you're understanding the difference a little bit. We are publishing a new video on how you can set up a connection to OpenAI and it will be released tomorrow. 
Uh, so keep an eye for that. Uh, and uh, remember um, me saying that there, these are two different things. Uh, then you select chat completion, which is again, just a way of saying, uh, I want to write something to the chat, uh, to, to chat GPT. And then you set up a model. Um, one point of remark here, it can be a bit confusing what kind of model you should go for. You might have seen all the big news about ChatGPT4, ChatGPT3.5, ChatGPT4.0. Uh, what does it really mean? Well, long story short, uh, ChatGPT4.0 is the latest model, which is kind of the cost benefit solution. It's quite good in quality, but it's also very fast and quite um, quite costly well well costly so it doesn't um, it doesn't cost you too much uh, so if I would recommend going with 4.0 uh, if you want a slightly more quality and you're willing to invest go with chat GPT4 uh, then you select the role of a user uh, that's basically just saying uh, I am I'm chatting to chat GPT there are some other options which suggest that make allows you to go slightly beyond uh, just chatting with chat GPT but uh, for now, let's just keep it simple and you should choose the user option. And then it's time to uh, put your prompt in. Uh, what I'm saying here is that I want to convert uh, postcode from, uh, from postcode to, um, to neighborhood. The reason why I'm doing this is that I don't know if you've ever seen postcodes in London, but there are just a bunch of different numbers and letters. And it's not really great to say, hey, I found you a flat in SWH6E. Uh, but it's better to say, I found you flat in Kensington. So that's why, you know, you can um, do this step. Then uh, once I set up this module, um, I'll put Anthropic in. So Anthropic, as I mentioned, is the concurrent, um, concurrent version uh, to OpenAI. Uh, they're actually pretty good when it comes to different uh, metrics in uh, creation of content. So they're really good at writing. So that's why we chose uh, to present to you Anthropic. Uh, you have to, again, choose a model here. Uh, they have three different models. Uh, one of them is Haiku, which is a smaller, kind of cheaper model uh, that you can use and experiment with. Maybe later you will switch to Opus, which is a more quality, uh, but slightly more costly model. You have to specify a number of tokens. Um, that's a scary word because it's not used anywhere else than in AI. Um, it's kind of to say uh, how long that message will be because you pay per tokens. Um, 1,500 might not tell you something specific, but it really means like the message should be slightly longer. Um, so it gives you some leeway. You can search on internet a little bit more about what, um, what numbers are appropriate. And then once you select a user, you just select text and write your prompt. So let's have a look at how a prompt like this look like. So here I have the prompt from the very scenario that you're seeing in the presentation. And you can see it's quite a bit of uh, context, text, and everything that I'm doing. Um, that's completely normal. You're basically just telling it to, telling the AI to do something for you. Uh, but one thing you could notice is that first I'm starting by introducing a little bit of context. The reason I'm doing this is because your result will be as good as your prompt. So give it a context, give it a good task, be specific, tell it what you want to do and what you do not want it to do. Uh, we can share these, uh, these texts uh, later on. This webinar is recorded so you can have a look at it again. You can experiment, play around. That's what Make is about. So don't, don't be afraid if it's too long. And lastly, and very importantly, I'm putting in this prompt because I'm basically saying, write an email for me. Uh, do it in this context because you're uh, a real estate agent. Uh, here is the lead information. So I'm taking the lead information from the previous module for my CRM. Okay, I'm also giving it the result of the neighborhood from, from our open AI. Uh, and then I'm just giving it an example of like what I think that the email should look like. Um, if you give it an example, it's very, very useful because at the end of the day, uh, you kind of uh, provide a good framework for the AI to, to work with. So that's a little bit of the prompt that we were using. And uh, the last step then is just to connect to Gmail, uh, which is fairly straightforward. You put the email address, so you put the email address of your lead. Uh, you put some a nice subject that your apartment is waiting, for example, and use the first name and just pass the, the result from your entropic module. 
After that, just make sure to update your CRM. Uh, so make sure to say, um, look, here in my leads, I want to change um, this record to, to contact it, to the fact that I actually sent this follow-up, which will create quite nice um, and updated and synced uh, CRM afterwards. So that's it for our first use case. Um, so Dan, what do you think? Is that useful for you as a marketer? I mean, of course it is useful, but I'm kind of wondering, can we take it to the next level? Like, can we improve it? What, what are your thoughts? Of course we can. We can always uh, improve um, what we are working on. Uh, so tell me, um, how would you like to, and this is by the way, the example of, of the email that we, uh, that we generated, but how would you like to um, improve this scenario? Well, what if I have some first party data at hand? Like, can you plug it into the AI workflow and maybe somehow match the leads request with our internal database? You know, just asking. Yeah, of course. Uh, we can do a lot of stuff, especially first party data is very useful to get more contacts, to um, use it for, uh, you know, better responses as well. So what I'm seeing here on the screen is the list of the properties that you have currently available and that you would like to offer, right? Yeah, exactly. It just happens to be the list of my properties in my database. And, you know, I, I want to use this list to send specific properties as a suggestion to delete, you know, when they ask us for an apartment in specific area, right? So I want to find the closest thing available and send them the price, you know, some specifications, et cetera. Here you can see why the postcode is, is a nightmare in London. Uh, so um, I suppose like this is a way uh, what we could do. So this is a kind of a response that we could get instead. So is this something that would work for you, the, this kind of email that really has a direct offer straight away? Yeah, 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 you know, as a buyer, I might be looking for something very specific and this would really address my needs. Yeah, here in London, we call this uh, time is money. So um, definitely it's important to to provide as much value and as quickly as possible. Um, great, so this is the kind of use case uh, that uh, we would end up with. Uh, it's not difficult. We will use something called AI agent, which might sound scary or exciting depending on your tolerance to new new things. Uh, but what we're really going to be doing is just to adjust the scenario a little bit. So we'll add one more module uh, where we will message an assistant, which we'll create together, and just tweak a little bit the module in Entropic to slightly change the kind of email that we will be generating. So let's get into this. So the first step of this is to build the assistant. Um, the assistant is basically uh, something from OpenAI, uh, which is available. It's a custom bot uh, that you can enrich with existing first-party data. So you can uh, you can upload a couple of different um, data points, such as the database of available properties. You can then call it in your scenario, and it will uh, make your prompt and your response better. So let's see how we can build an assistant like this. So I have one that I prepared for this case. Uh, I named it the realtor. Uh, what you have to do after naming that assistant is give it instructions. Instructions is uh, an yet another name for a prompt. So what I'm doing here is again, is a very structured prompt saying, your task is just to take uh, the, the data, the, the, da the list of available properties, and uh, also the data about the lead. So what the lead is looking for, what's their dream house, what's their budget, etc., and match those two together to, to, to put that information back and uh, include that in the email. Uh, I give it an example. So I will, for example, give it a couple of uh, uh, leads data for Jenny looking for an apartment in Greenwich. And the output is uh, a short description for, for Jenny uh, about the kind of offer that I'm making. So once you edit these instructions, you again choose a model. Uh, as, as you can see, I'm using the, the GPT-40. And you have to upload a file. So you do it in a way that uh, here you can see the list of available properties. You download this list uh, in PDF and you then upload this 
uh, here in, in this vector store, so in, in this uh, database for the assistant. It's nothing difficult, so you just download this, upload this, and that's it, really. Um, you don't have to touch anything else. So we have our assistant. And let's go into adapting our mix scenario. So as I mentioned, um, imagine everything is the same as we've done, uh, but we are going to add a module after we converted the postcode to the neighborhood. So we add one that's called message and assistant, um, which is basically messaging the assistant that we just built. What we will message it with? Well, we'll, we'll say that this is the kind of assistant we just built it, and we will pass it the lead data. So the lead data is really the, the one thing that is going to be changing with every leads. Um, so let's see how we can then tweak the second part, which is uh, the entropic, um, entropic content. So this is the same, uh, this is the same prompt that you saw up to now, right? The only thing I changed in this prompt is this, the list of av available properties. Take it from the result from the assistant that I just built. Okay, I didn't change anything else in this prompt and yet I get a completely different result. And that's it for our second use case as well. So what we got is by this tweak, by building an assistant and uh, including it in our scenario and adding a little tweak to Entropic, we managed to leverage this kind of data, which is our available offer, to get a very different kind of response where we already have um, an offer that we could put forward to the customer. So Dan, what are your thoughts on this? Not too bad, not too bad. I, I think it's kind of cool that you can do this loose matching, right? Because as a marketer, when you allow people to do free form entry, right? They, they can whatever dream house they have. And yet AI is still able to match and find the closest match, even based on these loose inputs. You know, this is what you would struggle when you do, when you try to sort the, so, solve this with like traditional database approach by filtering for things, etc. With AI, you know, these headaches, they just like completely disappear because it's gonna do the loose matching for you. So great. Well, I, I think you, you mentioned this, right? Um, AI has the potential to make your life really easier save up to five uh, up to 25 hours every month that you would spend on writing follow-ups or you know if you already um, use generic follow-ups to uh, to write to your customers uh, it will increase your conversion rate some studies say up to 10 percent uh, if you do your prompt well and i mentioned that good prompting is half of the success more than half of the success maybe in some cases you can do even more than 10 percent so that's it for the live demo and from the principal for the principal content. Uh, on the right side, you can see a link to scan to get a little gift from Make, where you can try these different prompts and these different uh, different ways how to engage with AI, with Meta, with the conversion API, how to set up your own CRM. Uh, there will be a tutorial about setting the the connection to OpenAI, as I mentioned, published tomorrow. You will get this uh, recording on YouTube afterwards as well. So now it's really time to address your questions, if you have any. Maybe while we wait for the questions, I can kind of like throw in one. And that is what kind of subscription do you need in OpenAI to make these things happen? Or Anthropic, you know, maybe you could address both. Yeah, so, so I mentioned there are two different uh, ways how we can access the services from OpenAI. One is the chat GPT that uh, everyone uh, knows, uh, hopefully, by now. Um, this is really a, a chat that's um, for users. But if you want to connect to Make, uh, you need to go to platform uh, from the OpenAI. So let me just show you. Is this platform? platform.openai.com. So make sure to have a look, um, get your account that's free. You will have to put a little uh, investment into it, but it's not it's not a lot. So um, let's say you're using this uh, for 
all of your follow-ups. It can come up in, um, depending on how long your data is and how long your response is, it can come up in just a couple of dollars. So try it out. Uh, and Tropic is exactly the same. So it has a, a front-end solution, but it also has a platform that you can connect to make. Okay, we have some questions coming in. Um, so Sarah, the first one is from Juan. Uh, can you check it out? Um, he is specifically asking about the do not command, like how reliable is it? Which is also a big question of mine as well. Uh, sorry, could you repeat the question? Because for some reason I cannot Okay, see so I'm going to read it for you. Um, so you. Juan is asking, how reliable would you say is the do not make things up prompt? My concern is that you risk sending out misleading information and then have to face that with a client. That would keep him up at night and myself as well. <laughs> that's an amazing question. Uh, there's um, Yeah, that can happen. Uh, and I can hallucinate. Um, if you go back to um, to the scenario, you could see that the email that we were having in that scenario was to create a draft, not to send that email directly. So that's one way of making sure to kind of uh, have some element of control, we recommend this, uh, but it also depends like what's your scale um, of, of the operations. If you have uh, 2000 uh, follow-ups every day, that might be difficult. So one way you can address this, for example, is by filters. Like you can uh, filter for specific kind of, of content. So for example, let's say AI retrieves something uh, that's not uh, reasonable or it doesn't retrieve um, something that's not on the topic. There's a lot of things that you can filter out in the scenario. And then you can, uh, and what I often recommend and do myself when you are uh, feeling playful, you can set up a different AI to check your first AI. So that's how you can uh, mitigate uh, that risk a little bit. All right. There is another one, and I guess it's the glooming elephant in the room. Why would you use Entropic versus only OpenAI? Uh, you don't have to use Entropic. It was to uh, give you different options. Uh, it was to show you uh, that there is not just OpenAI. That's the first reason uh, why we selected it for this presentation. Second is that if you look for metrics on content creation quality, which is you know drafting emails, uh, drafting text, uh, and Tropic is consistently ranking as the highest uh, of the LLMs on the market. Uh, some parts of Entropic can be slightly cheaper as well. So it depends on the scale of your operation. So for example, the Haiku model uh, is potentially, um, depending on which model you choose from OpenAI, it's slightly cheaper. But yeah, you can do it with just OpenAI. Like that's not an, not an issue. All right, perfect. There is one question for Matt. Um, are you following it? Uh, um, yeah. Okay, so, I would love to find out more about the Facebook Conversions API. What data can we send? What is the most useful for Facebook, etc.? Yep, absolutely. There, there's a lot of content about the Conversions API available on our developer site and on our uh, marketer help centers. Um, fundamentally, you, there's a lot of data you can send. Um, you can send pretty much anything you want with the exception of a few restricted data categories that might be subject to reg regulation like healthcare or financial services. Um, but really the things that are most important to us are your lower funnel events or the lowest funnel that you're capable of tracking or reporting back on. Letting us know when a purchase happens, when a lead conversion happens, when a subscription happens, um, when these key business outcomes happen, uh, we want to know so we can help you get more of those. Um, that's how we train our systems to go chase these outcomes, um, and basically the lower funnel, the lower into the funnel you can report back to us, the more success you're going to see driving your core business outcomes. All right. I guess we have run out of questions because the next one was very similar to the previous one. Um, yeah. So yeah, guys. I, I, can, I can touch on that quickly. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Go on. Since we have time. Um, when you pass the data back to Meta, what are the benefits again to the advertiser? So Signal really enables three core things on our platform. It enables targeting, optimization, and measurement. So you're able to target based on the signals you sent back to us, show ads to people that reach this step in the funnel, but not this step. Uh, you can build audiences based off this data. You can use it, or we'll use it to optimize your campaign outcomes for you. Um, it, it's really the data, the fuel that powers all of our um, AI optimizations. 
then it's also measurement. It's how we're going to report back to you the outcomes of your marketing campaign. So that's how you know that, hey, this, this campaign got me 20 leads and this campaign got me 30. And this is what I paid for these campaigns. This is my cost per lead. Um, and really help you understand the outcomes that uh, are happening from your campaigns. All right, perfect. There is one more. Uh, I believe, Sarah, this one is for you. Uh, but I'm not sure if you know the answer because I don't. Uh, does make plan on adding meta AI as a module? When you say meta AI, yeah. uh, maybe specify what you mean. Do you mean like Llama or... Um, Honestly, I don't know. This is what the question says. So Corey, if you can maybe throw in more details, then we can look at it. Um, yeah, he's asking about Llama. Yeah, so Llama is an open source model. Uh, so it's not, you know, like when you look at OpenAI and when you look at Entropic, those are solutions that are offered from, from a firm to customers. So you pay for that use and we can connect to them. Um, on the other hand, uh, Llama is an open source um, model, which you can download and deploy on your own computer, uh, which is a little bit difficult for us because since it's just code that you can download and deploy, there's no way for us to connect to it. Uh, there's a couple of services that um, are um, on, available in Make, which allow you to connect to Llama. So there are third party services. Um, so that's already available. Uh, but at the moment, unless we deploy it ourselves and uh, somehow give you access to it, um, there's no way to deploy it in the same way as Entropic or, or OpenAI. All right, perfect. Um, Matt, there is one for you. I mean, I guess I know the answer as well, but you are the, the bigger guy in the room for this one. <laughs> yeah. So the question is, uh, what if I get a sale that didn't happen through a meta form? Should we still send this to? What should we send? Email in the event. Um, yeah, so we, we would recommend that um, because, again, you're still helping us understand who your ideal customer is. And we can also understand if maybe they saw one of your other marketing campaigns, whether it was a lead form on our site or maybe some other type of campaign you're running, and see if that was driven, uh, the lead submission or the sales that happened through other channels were affected by our ads. Um, and for what should we send email in the event? Uh, yeah, you can send a variety of different for lead for our lead gen ads. All you have to do is send back the lead ID that we pass to you. You pass us back the lead ad, the lead ID, and we can um, identify which customer you were talking about. Um, if we did not give you the lead ID, if you did not get the lead from us, there's a variety of different uh, signals that you can provide to help us identify who that customer is if we have that information on file as well. So things like an email address or a phone number are generally really useful. We can check if we have that on file as well and understand who that customer is. Okay, uh, then we have another question which kind of confirms what we've been showing in the webinar. So it's for all of us, but uh, Tangela or Tangela uh, writes that it seems that Make allows the marketers to personalize the email response, particularly based on the input soon after the lead ad on Meta you know, arrives. Uh, so let's suppose the user has given his health issue like digestive issues or supplements or wellness or whatever. Uh, Make can help in this case, right? To create a recommendation, like product recommendation. And yeah, like the answer is very simply, yes. This is what we've been doing, right? Like we were not creating recommendations per se, we were creating offers, but we had the same problem, right? Like we had a form with something specific which the lead was asking us for. And then we compared it against the known database of offers. In your case, it would be products. And then we create a customized message based on the matching we did. And in your case, the problem is exactly the same, basically. So yeah, like make and help here. Okay, I'm gonna go through the questions. Okay, huh. I guess Matt, the uh, audience one is for you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, more webinars about custom audiences and Facebook events. Uh, these would be invaluable. Any plans for this? Uh, I'm not sure if something has been scheduled, but I would assume uh, something will happen. <laughs> I think we can make that happen. Yeah. Please let us know when you do. Uh, I'm also curious to get my learning up to date in that regard. All right. Uh, no more questions. Um, I guess we can wrap it up then.
we are even early, so we will give you seven minutes back for your coffee, I guess, for those who are waking up just. <laughs> Before you, you run out, uh, in case this is uh, your first time seeing Make, uh, you might be wondering how to get started. So uh, just head, out, head to make.com. Um, you can sign up uh, and it's free. So you don't have to pay anything to just test uh, run. And besides, you've just seen the QR code where we've given you a, a lot of uh, operations uh, to play with. Uh, there is a lot of templates. So you can just head to the template gallery and just pick a template and it will pre-create a scenarios for you. There's also make AI assistant because we're really passionate about AI. Uh, and so you can go into that assistant and ask it to generate scenarios for you so you can play around in, that, in, in this way as well. If you're curious about some of the concept that we mentioned, go to Make Academy. It's a free certification course where you can learn all about Make. And there's an amazing uh, range of resources on customer uh, support, uh, help center, YouTube, and the Make community when you can really share with different makers. We are all about learning together and being playful together. One of our motto is game on. So uh, we try to put that forward into the Make community as well. So make sure to be part of that. And don't miss uh, all the things that are going to happen very soon. So we are right in the middle of marketing series. So we are really trying to uh, show you how you can use AI uh, to do different parts of your roles as marketers. Uh, there's two amazing events coming up uh, very, very soon. So one is on the 2nd of July, uh, which is uh, hosted by Leo, our co-head of marketing at Make, just like the second uh, event, which is slightly later on 10th of July. So go and, and check the, the description, um, sign up and uh, come and learn with us on this exciting journey. With that, thank you so much for coming. I really love this webinar. Uh, it was so much fun to be your host today. So I uh, can't wait to see you again soon.